Hi friends! Today we're going to talk my top 10 authors of the last decade. Technically I have 10 of my top authors and then 5 I'm calling honorable mentions that are authors that I really loved the books that I've read but I've only read one or two so I don't feel like I can call them like a favorite of the decade quite yet. But it's probably going to be a long one. I'm actually going to show you the books, ooh, as they fall over, show you the books from those authors that I currently own and have read. So grab some popcorn. It's going to be a long one. I don't really have a method to this madness. I just decided to go alphabetical and uh, that means we're going to start off with Cassie Clare. I have four piles of Cassie Clare books next to me so I'm just gonna start with the one that's closest. I have the Shadowhunters Codex, which is just, I literally just bought because it, it was pretty. I don't know where I'm gonna put these when I'm done talking about them, but back there. And then I have the 10th anniversary editions of both City of Bones and Clockwork Angel. I have the UK cover editions of the Mortal Instruments series, so the these ones, the ones with all the color. These are my UK cover editions. And then also of the Mortal Instruments series, I have the I have the Pretty Spine editions. The paperback ones. I also have the Pretty Spine editions of the Dark Artifices. I have the third one, but my aunt is currently reading it, so I do have all three of those. Please note, I have other Cassie Clare books. These are just the ones that I've read. Because I didn't pull out anything I haven't read yet by any of these authors, so. And I have the hardcover editions of <laughs> The Dark Artifices. Excessive, I know. She says knowing full well she just held up 12 books from the same series. It's fine. I just realized I'm missing books. Sorry if I moved, I had to go get more books. Um, then I have the pretty fine editions of The Infernal Devices. And I also have the Infernal Devices mangas. All three of those and the first three volumes of the Mortal Instruments graphic novels. Red Scrolls of Magic, The Bane Chronicles, Tales from Shadowhunter Academy, and finally of Cassie Clare I have the Magisterium series that is co-written with Holly Black. I think that's 37 Cassie Clare books maybe. I would consider Cassie as one of my top authors of the last decade even though I would say for most of these I discovered them later in the decade, probably more like 2014-2015. Cassie's books definitely reignited my love for reading. I was still reading about 12 to 15 books a year at that point, but the first year that I started reading The Mortal Instruments I read like 40 some books that year and since then have read as many as 113 books in a year. The characters that Cassie writes about and I think that really is more of it for me than you know, the plot or um, the writing style or anything, it's the characters and the interpersonal relationships is definitely what draws me to Cassie's writing and what makes me love the books. And I think, I think for someone who enjoys that part of her writing, the way that the Shadowhunter Chronicles is set up is perfect because it is multi-generations of characters that are all interconnected and interwoven and <laughs> related in one way or another as all true Shadowhunter families are and it just there's so much there to unpack and there's so many emotions that are involved in the reading and I think that is one of my favorite things is just the emotion that you're able to get from words on a page. I always love you know, when a book moves you and makes you feel a specific way. And I think you have to have an attachment to the characters to get that. And Cassie is one of the few authors who really makes me feel super connected to the characters and makes me just absolutely love everything I read about them. And would, as evidenced by the number of books that I have read. Um, as of to date, the only thing that she has published that I haven't read is Ghost of Shadow Market and I have started it and haven't finished it. Um, I was reading that prior to having finished Queen of Air and Darkness and I was like wait this is probably gonna have some spoilers in it so I should probably read Queen of Air and Darkness first. So that's what I did and I need to go back to Ghost of Shadow Market and finish that but 
Cassie's books definitely reignited my love for reading and I don't think this list would be complete without her on it. <laughs> Next alphabetically gets us to Susan Dennard who I also have many many collections of. First is the Something Strange and Deadly series. I have the first edition hardcovers of the Witchline series which is Truth Witch, Wind Witch, Sight Witch, Blood Witch, Witch. I also have a spare copy of Blood Witch because why not? I also have the UK cover editions of the Truth Witch series which there's only three of those. They didn't redo a cover for Sight Witch so I only own the one copy of Sight Witch. Speaking of updated covers I also have the newest editions of the US covers that were like this. Susan is on this list because of the way that she writes period. Susan's a master at writing in things in the first chapter of the first book that you think is so small and inconsequential and yet in book four is the entire catalyst for the plot. She is able to write things in that just absolutely blow my mind. And when I first read Truth Witch, I thought it was pretty predictable. I, I won't lie, like that was kind of my, my biggest complaint with Truth Witch was that I felt like the foreshadowing was a little heavy handed. And the funny thing is that as you read Wind Witch and Sight Witch and Blood Witch, there are so many things from that first book that you miss that you had no idea were going to play a part in the later books that it's it's so strange that the foreshadowing on some things is kind of heavy but yet some things just completely blow you out of the water and I love the way that she writes action I mean there are sea battles like with boats and giant sea monsters and battles with fire and just so much stuff and the way that she writes her witcheries and the way that she writes her friendship between Safi and Iz it's just amazing and I love everything about it and I just there's so much about the way that Suze writes that I can never obtain like she is everything that I aspire to be as a writer uh, one day hopefully but uh just, I just I, I I love Suze. I love her writing. Um, I love I love the way that she's able to put a plot together. It just astounds me. If that gets us into Amanda Hawking. Of Hawking's work I have the Trill Trilogy, the Canon Chronicles, and also the Valkyrie duology. Amanda's writing is fun. I was completely immersed in the troll world and the troll trilogy from the very beginning and from that first book and you get like it has all of the cliches I mean it's got the love triangle and I love the way it turned out and I love the way that it worked and it's got you know a girl who has hidden powers that didn't know that she had hidden powers but it's done so well and so logically for the way that I know lore from history and from fairy tales and it just it, it is so much fun just both trilogies are so much fun I didn't love the Valkyrie series as much I wish there had been a little more um, revision done on that I definitely love the books that are set in Trill and Canon and I'm so excited that the series is going to continue later this year um, and to get more of that world. I just, like I said, her writing is just fun and I love her, the characters and the way um, that they all kind of come together. It has a lot of political intrigue, which we know is my favorite, which also both, most of these books have in common is that they write a lot of political intrigue into them. There's a lot of political drama and I really like that, as we have discovered. And then we move on to Maureen Johnson. Maureen is kind of a concession in that she also writes some of Cassie's works that are in the bind ups. So I know that I enjoy Maureen's work in that. I read the 13 Little Blue Envelopes series, the duology of that, and these were okay. They weren't my favorite thing ever. I have been loving the Truly Devious series by Maureen. I feel like 
she deserves a spot here as well. Maureen, as we discussed, I didn't love the Envelopes series. It wasn't my favorite thing ever. It was fun and it was, you know, a nice fun contemporary in a, for me who hadn't really ever read contemporaries before, but I enjoyed them. Definitely the Truly Devious series is where Maureen won me over. I have read the first two books in that series. The third book isn't out yet. It'll be out this month. I'm so excited. I'm getting to reread Truly Devious this month and annotate it and do a book club for it. The way that she writes in the mystery of everything it is so much fun to get to read and like try to put things together. And I love that at the end of each book you kind of solve one of the riddles but not everything all together. So you still have like this one large overarching mystery but you're getting to solve these little mysteries throughout. I really love the way that that is written. It's just so much fun to read. Then we get into Mercedes Lackey, of which I have only read the Hunter trilogy. And Mercedes has a crap ton of backlist. This was just kind of like a newer YA. She has a lot of stuff out there, so I do intend to go into the deep dive of her backlist at some point, but really loved this trilogy that I read last year, I believe. The Hunter series is a bit different. It's a po it's post-apocalyptic, but it's also speculative and what I would consider paranormal. But I love the world that Mercedes created. I wish that, I know she has a large backlist as I said, but I wish there was more from that world specifically and I don't think there is. I think there's stuff from other more high fantasy type stuff. I love her world building. I love the world that she created. Again, could be said about most every author on this list that created a world, um, especially Susan. Love her world building as well. But I love the creatures and the different types of creatures that Mercedes is able to build and the way that she explains them and the way that she explains like which creature attaches to which human. And you can tell like by the creature what they're humans. It, it is so fascinating that me who forgets everything is like able to connect these things together because she explains it so well that it just sticks in my brain and it's there forever. And I thought the books were really emotional. I thought that they were really well done. Very high action. Um, just a lot of things in those that I really loved and really enjoyed. And then we get to Carrie Maniscalco of whom I have read the first three books in the Stalking Jack the Ripper series and loved all three. The Stalking Jack the Ripper series is so much fun. It's a historical fiction and I feel like you definitely get that historical fiction feel from it. I haven't read a whole bunch of historical fiction but I've read enough and you definitely get that feel about it but it also has a modern day feel to it as well. I think that as I have said many times about Audrey Rose who was the main character of that series that Carrie wrote her as this person who definitely lives outside of her time. She is a Victorian era girl who belongs in a modern world and it's really fun to get to read and see how, not how she acts, but how the people around her react to the way that she acts. She's a really fun character to read and to see how things happen and despite the fact that it's like a Victorian era kind of drama, there's a lot of action in them as well. And I just, I love the mystery aspect and I'm usually able to figure out who the killer is pretty early on, but it's fun to watch the characters get there. That's the thing is like sometimes in a thriller when you figure out what's going on pretty early, it kind of bums you out for the rest of the story. But I think because so much of these stories aren't necessarily the mystery aspect of it. You're getting the interpersonal relationships and the world building and everything. It makes it kind of fun to watch the characters try to figure out what's going on even though you already know or have a good idea of what's going on. And I really enjoy that about the series as a whole. Um, I need to read the final book in the series. I'm very excited to get to that hopefully this month just because it's just a world that I love and I, 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 I want to finish it but again I don't want to finish it. That moves us on to Rochelle Mead, of which I have read the Vampire Academy series. I also have the 10th anniversary edition of Vampire Academy because the cover. And the Vampire Academy graphic novels. 
Um, they only published the first three of these, which is kind of sad because I really enjoyed them. And also the Bloodlines series as well. And finally, Soundless, which is a standalone. Rochelle I also credit for revitalizing my love of reading. I found her and Cassie around the same time and much like Cassie have read multiple series from her since then. You know again the Vampire Academy series it's all about the interpersonal relationships, the political aspects of it, and just the drama. They're super fun to read. There's some things in them that's just you know there are definite things to take issue with the main love interest is a 16 or 17 year old girl in love with a 24 or 5 year old man. I mean, I get it. It's not perfect. I don't know. It was it was a fun time and I mean I was reading it in my mid, mid 20s so I mean it's not like it was affecting my teenage years any. I loved it. Uh, <laughs> and I also think that series is really good about kind of teaching you how to deal with grief and loss and tragedy and even though a lot of things kind of end up within with a happily ever after in most cases. I think it's really good about you know teaching you how to deal with the bad parts of life and I enjoy that. I, I enjoy that it has like the darker side of it and the darker side of things that happen in that world even though it's not something that's necessarily going to happen in our world because it's supernatural. But her writing is really just something that kind of opens your eyes up to the darker side of things which is weird because it's the, the movie is so bright and happy, but the books are so dark. And I love both of them equally, but for different reasons. And I will also say Soundless is like a whole other world. Literally, it's a whole other world. It's a very different type of novel. It's very more serious um, than the Vampire Academy and Bloodline series. And I enjoyed it. And so I, I know that I can read more serious things from her that are and things that are darker. So I'm interested to see, I know she has other works out there that I need to catch up on, so I'm interested to get to those hopefully someday soon in the future as well. And now we have moved on to Marissa Meyer, of whom I have read The Lunar Chronicles. Just The Lunar Chronicles, along with the Fairest and the Stars Above anthology. Prequel novels, anthologies, etc. Marissa Meyer single-handedly changed my entire mind about fairy tale retellings, cyborgs, and sci-fi. Yeah. When Cinder came out a million years ago, I seen it in a bookstore. I went, Cinderella, really? Okay, cool. And also cyborgs? Nah, I'm good. Like six years later, here's me on book outlet. Do, 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 do. Oh, the entire Lunar Chronicles on sale for $25. I must have that. And then I read it. And then I went, why the hell did I wait so long to read this? My preconceived notions kept me from reading a book that I absolutely love. Probably the main thing in the Lunar Chronicles that I love is the political aspect of it. And yeah, the characters are great and I love their interpersonal relationships and I love, again, the drama. And that's, again, what all of these authors do, that they have so many things in common and yet they all are so different. Meyer was really able to capture the political drama on a level that no one else was really able to do because the queen is so crazy and just the things that she did and the horror and just the grotesqueness of this woman the things that she was able to do and it just horrifying and it's a fun read with a really dark side to it and I definitely enjoyed that about it and I again hope to read more from her in the future. And the next one on my top 10 is another one that could rival Cassie Clare in the amount of books that I own. We're going with Rick Riordan. Riordan? Riordan? Riordan. I believe is correct but I still say Riordan. Fight me. First we have Percy Jackson and the Olympian series along with a sort of Hades novella. And then the Heroes of Olympus series the first three books of the Trials of Apollo series. I have not read the fourth book yet. Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, the three books in the series as well as the Nine Worlds bind up. Um, one of my nieces is currently borrowing the first book in the series so I don't have that to show. And then the Kane Chronicles trilogy. Uncle Rick, How I Love Thee, 
let me count the ways. In fact, I couldn't count the ways. Much like with Cassie Clare and some of the others that we've discussed, Rick's books are wonderful at interpersonal relationships and with creating characters and worlds that we absolutely love, that I absolutely love. But the thing that Rick does differently from everyone else, not necessarily completely differently from everyone else, the thing that makes Rick shine is his diversity and his inclusiveness. There are characters from so many different backgrounds, from so many different parts of the world. Some are rich, some are poor, some are disabled, some are able-bodied. This is just so many different things that Rick is able to encapsulate in these characters. And I love that it comes from a middle-aged white man. Not that, you know, they don't get their praises sung enough or anything, but I just, I love that there's a middle-aged white man out there who cares enough to not only write them into his books, but also to be a champion for more unknown writers who are writing stories from their own backgrounds and from their own cultures and has his entire own side press that he does books from authors of other diversities. And he's just a great dude. Like outside of the fact that he writes amazing, he's just a great dude. Rick is a writer that makes me want to write better. Um, you know, it's mid-grade stories, but they're mid-grade stories with a lot of heart and a lot of love and a lot of diversity and inclusiveness. And I think that we should all be champions for that. And I think that Rick's books are not only books that represent the kind of books that I hope to write one day, but also the kind of person that I hope to be one day. I hope I am now already. But I don't know, I'm kind of an asshole sometimes. I'm definitely not the purist that Uncle Rick is. And then the final author on this list, I only have two books of, and they're both standalones, and that is Crystal Sutherland, and the books are a semi-definitive list of Worst Nightmares and Our Chemical Hearts. I read this in 2018, this in 2019, and these are all that she has published so far, and that's why I feel kind of solid about putting her on this list, even though I've only read two of her books. This book I've talked about a lot on my channel. I have a full review for it kind of changed my life. So Crystal's writing is weird <laughs> to say the least, especially semi-definitive list because it has so many like interesting speculative little bits and pieces that you're just not sure what's real and what's not real. But I definitely love the way that she writes. It's very whimsy but also heartfelt. And I love the way she writes her characters and that you're able to connect to them. The reveals that she has throughout her books are just, I, I definitely think that she's a kind of person or a kind of writer that is not for everyone. And I know people that enjoy speculative books that haven't enjoyed her books, but they just are so good to me. Like they just give me every good and bad feeling. semi definitive list gave me a completely different view of depression and holding oneself back and just life in general. You know, it was really just this completely different viewpoint of the world. And like I said, I read that book twice in the same month. And I have said before that that book kind of changed my life and it kind of did because it made me rethink the way that I look at things in the world. I never really thought about, I think that's probably the first book that I've read that was mostly contemporary with like a speculative element and it just blew my mind. It was just, just so perfect for me at that time. I loved it and I hope she writes many many more books and that I can read them all. You want the honorable mentions, don't you? Okay, let's do that. Again, alphabetical. Jen DeLuca, who wrote Well Met, and this is her debut novel. I'm probably going to talk about the honorable mentions a little less winded than the others. Jen's writing was just fun. It was a good time. I really enjoyed the book itself and the setting, definitely, and the characters, and it was a real fun time. I'm Ashley Elston, who wrote Ten Blind Dates, which I read recently. I don't have that book currently. Uh, my friend is borrowing that, so spreading love. Ashley's book was my only true five star of the entire year. A lot of that is because of the family aspect of it and of the just the pure fun and enjoyment that I had reading that book and I am so excited 
for the next book that comes out in that series. I have to wait till 2021 but it's totally worth it. And then CC Hunter who wrote This Heart of Mine. CC Hunter has a large backlist that I hope to get to very soon in the future because I loved this book so much. Obviously I don't know about the rest of CC Hunter's books but This Heart of Mine was it was crazy. It was a wild ride. It just it's so emotional. It was one of the most emotional books that I've probably read in the last decade. Definitely deserving of a spot in the honorable mentions because of just the way that it made you feel. You know, reading about a teenage girl who knows she doesn't have her whole life ahead of her, who knows that she's going to have these struggles and these issues and things that are going to be going on forever, and then the speculative element of it, and just, it was a damn good book, and I loved it. And Angie Thomas who wrote The Hate You Give as well as On The Come Up which I don't know why I didn't grab because I own that one as well but I loved this one. I didn't love On The Come Up as much so that's why it's kind of more of an honorable mention than in the favorites. I could sing the praises of The Hate You Give from here until the end of time and it could not be enough to tell you how good that book is and I think that everyone out there has pretty much who has read it has discussed the amazingness of that body of work and I believe that Angie deserves a spot on this list because of just the way that she opened up my mind to a world that I don't have access to and I just really loved that book and I loved the way that it made me see the world and it changed my viewpoint of the world in ways uh, because it was able to show me things that I can't see in my everyday life. And also in the honorable mention category because I loved one book and okay liked another would be Adrian Young and I loved Sky in the Deep and I just sort of liked this one which is funny because I don't own a copy of Sky in the Deep so I need to eradicate that issue very soon. Adrian is on this list simply for the found family elements of her story and for the action. She writes some amazing action scenes that I haven't seen anyone else ever do and they were just a great time to read and gory and full of action which an action scene should be and I was really surprised by how much I loved Sky in the Deep. Like I said I didn't love The Girl the Sea Gave back as much but I definitely enjoyed it and I can see the potential there and I do believe that I will have Adrienne on this list in the next decade if she continues to write. Alright guys those are my top 10 authors of the last decade as well as my five honorable mentions. Let me know in the comments below if you have read any of these authors, if you have 10 favorite authors that you've read in the last decade or just one or two. Let me know in the comments below what they are. I would love to check out some of your favorites as well as more of my own. If you have made it this far into the video, don't forget that tomorrow I will be doing a live chat on this channel with Kate Kavanaugh. It is our AuthorTube chat for the month of January. We will be talking about planning and we will be announcing the book club pick for January and February and that is at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here. On my channel you can set a reminder it's already posted that is all I have for today I post reading writing book and planner related videos typically on Mondays Wednesdays and bonus videos on the weekend so if you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future make sure you subscribe and until then I will see you guys next time bye